Hello, I'm Anjali Rao. My guest today was one of the most outspoken critics of former Pakistani Prime Minister Benazir Bhutto. She also happens to have been her niece. She's Fatima Bhutto. This is Talk Asia. Good afternoon. Taking her place on the world stage. Born into the Bhutto dynasty, Fatima's life has always been under scrutiny. But she's recently emerged as a journalist and outspoken political commentator. Then it says another promise fulfilled. There were other answers that another promise delivered. We promised you elections, we've done it, aren't we clever? And then it says congratulations to the nation. A fierce opponent of President Pervez Musharraf, she's seen by some as a future political leader. The party of her family, the Pakistan People's Party, was founded by her grandfather, Zulfika Bhutto, who was Pakistan's first democratically elected prime minister. He was later executed by the military and his cause taken up by his daughter, Benazir, who served two terms as prime minister. Brought up in Karachi, Fatima was deeply critical of her aunt's record, blaming her for the death of her father, who was shot dead by police in 1996 when Benazir was in office. Then in December of last year, Benazir Bhutto herself was killed while campaigning. If you're just joining us, we are looking at the assassination of Pakistan's opposition leader, Benazir Bhutto. The former two-time prime minister was killed in a suicide attack at a political rally in the city of Rawalpindi. Subsequent elections saw massive gains for the PPP, who have taken power in a coalition government. Fatima, it's great to have you with us on this edition of Talk Asia. So let's begin with the most recent incident involving the Bhutto name, obviously the assassination of your aunt, Benazir. Take us back to the moment when you found out what had happened. I was in Larkana, which is um, in the interior of Sindh, and um, I was going door to door. I was campaigning uh, for my mother and the party, and someone pulled me aside and said that there had been an explosion, but that she hadn't been hurt. You know, and just four days before, our interior minister had also been the target of a, a suicide bomb attack. Um, and just a very short while later, I, you know, I was told that I had to leave and that we had to go home. And as soon as I sat in the car, they told me that she'd passed away. And it just felt, it felt a bit too familiar, really. It felt like we'd done this before, like we'd done this too many times before. You had an acrimonious relationship with her when she was alive, I think, to say the least. But now in death, you refer to her as Wadi Bua, which is what you called her when you were a kid. Mm -hmm. Should we read from that that you regret being so outspoken against her? No. Uh, I don't regret anything I said because I, I always spoke on political matters. Um, my criticism to her was political, not personal. But when she died, you know, it became very clear to me that I knew two Benazirs. I mean, I knew two very different women. The first was Wadi, my aunt. Um, you know, and I knew her when she was a young woman, not much older than I am now. Um, when she was fighting against great odds and she was brave and, and she was out of power and struggling. And then I knew the other Benazir, who was Benazir, who was in power. And that was a Benazir that caused a lot of suffering for a lot of people. And that was a Benazir um, that was unrecognizable to me. And I, ch I, I choose to remember her as, as Wadi. I choose to remember her, now that she's not with us, as the first. Do you miss her then? Even when she was alive, I missed Wadi. What precisely was it that you were so angry with her about when she was alive? I don't know if angry is the right word. I think as a Pakistani, you know, we lived through two of her governments. Um, and people placed a lot of hope in her. People um, really stood in solidarity with her when she began her political career. And, and she spoke to a lot of what the people wanted. You know, she spoke to hope and she spoke to change. And in power, however, she was no different than what we'd seen before. You know, she presided over 
large-scale corruption. Her second government especially was known for its human rights abuses. Um, there was, of course, you know, the relationship with the Taliban. I mean, the Taliban government of Afghanistan was recognized and accepted by Benazir's last government. These are things that that stayed. These are things that remain. I mean, the corruption we have witness of every day. We live in a very poor country. We live in an underdeveloped country. Um, and there's evidence of that. Till today, it continues. And we were disappointed. I think we were very disappointed. We were disappointed to see two governments go that way. And I think the lack of accountability um, as she returned was 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 very surprising. I mean, she came back and she, through a deal with the dictator, through General Musharraf, um, negotiated the National Reconciliation Ordinance, which is a bill unilaterally passed and signed by the president, that erases 20 years of corruption and includes a provision that will make it impossible to file sitting charges against future uh, parliamentarians. That's why we were angry. Her son, your cousin, Bilawal, is to take over uh, the leadership of her party, the PPP. Why have I become chairman of the Pakistan People's Party, founded by my grandfather 40 years ago? The answer to this question is because it was recognized at this moment of crisis, the party needed a close association with my mother through the bloodline. We don't know a lot about him. Are you in touch with him at all? No, I mean, the last time I saw Bilawal, uh, before his mother's murder. He was eight years old. <laughs> Any idea then what sort of a, a leader he'll make, what sort of a, a head of party and indeed one day maybe even head of state? Oh, I don't know. I don't think I can um, comment on someone who might last knew as an eight-year-old. <laughs> 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 that wouldn't really be fair. Well, I don't know really. We'll have to see. Although the members of the party hadn't considered you to, uh, to take over as, uh, as head of it. There were plenty of Pakistani citizens who said you'd be absolutely perfect. Any, any desire on your part to enter political life? No, no, I'm, um, I write. Um, I'm political through my writings. Um, I'm an activist uh, on the local level. I mean, not through any party organization. Um, and I think there are many ways to be political and to push for reform and change outside of Parliament. We've had 30 years of seeing just how um, capable our Parliament is. So no, I, I'm not interested in, in, in power politics at all. Over the years you've been um, extremely vocal not only against your aunt Benazir mm -hmm. but also against President Pervez Musharraf. Mm -hmm. By speaking out so publicly against you know, two figures who are incredibly high profile and also incredibly divisive. Mm -hmm. Do you not fear for your own safety? No, I, mean, I don't fear for my safety um, because I'm outspoken. I think when you begin to self-censor, you know, then you've done the stage job for them. Then they can just rest quite easily, um, especially when you live under a dictatorship as we do in Pakistan. You know, whether he calls himself president or not now, um, he's still a president that no one voted for. Uh, I think it becomes even more important to speak out and more important to hold our public officials accountable. In terms of fear, I think that's not unique to me at all. I think most Pakistanis feel it. We live in very uncertain times. Um, and it's a consideration every time you leave your house, you know. Your father was gunned down outside your home when you were 14 years old. How has that affected you throughout your life? <laughs> 